The Sunday School lesson for November 5th, 2023 is What is Required for Salvation? Acts chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Welcome, viewers and subscribers, to my channel, The Backstory and More. I am Audrey. If you are new here, welcome and notice the agenda. I will share the backstory, read the lesson text, and offer a brief lesson summary. Let's begin. First century Judaism. Most of Jesus' earliest followers were Jewish, and they still participated in many of the practices of Judaism. For example, until the destruction of the Jerusalem temple in AD 70, Jewish followers of Jesus participated in some of the temple's ceremonies. Additionally, throughout the Roman Empire, Jewish believers continued to participate in the synagogues. Jews gathered in these buildings for worship and teaching from the scriptures. The Gentiles. Some Gentiles had become highly regarded within their local Jewish communities, partly because of their support of synagogues. The book of Acts mentions one such individual, Cornelius, a Gentile who was God-fearing. There is no indication that these Gentiles took up the requirements of Judaism. As a result, they were not considered fellow children of Abraham. Circumcision and the Gentiles. There were, however, some Gentiles who chose to convert fully to Judaism. Male converts were required to be circumcised, a painful, even dangerous surgical procedure in the days of rudimentary anesthetics and no antibiotics. Circumcision was the sign of the covenant between God and Abraham. During the first century AD, some individuals had been teaching that Gentile followers of Jesus needed to be circumcised according to the law of Moses. The reasoning for this position was that Israel had always been the distinct people of God. It was to Israel that God had revealed himself, given his law, and specified circumcision as the sign of his covenant. This group assumed that if God were making himself known to the nations, then the nations should be circumcised according to the law of Moses. Verse 1. Certain people came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. Verse 2, this brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were appointed along with some other believers, to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. Verse 3, the church sent them on their way, and as they traveled through Phoenicia and Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been converted. This news made all the believers very glad. Verse 4, when they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and elders to whom they reported everything God had done through them. Verse 5, then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, the Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moses. Verse 6, the apostles and elders met to consider this question. Verse 7, after much discussion, Peter got up and addressed them. Brothers, you know that some time ago God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear 
from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. Verse 8, God, who knows the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them, just as he did to us. Verse 9, he did not discriminate between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. Verse 10, now then, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of Gentiles a yoke that neither we nor our ancestors have been able to bear? No, we believe it is through the grace of our Lord Jesus that we are saved just as they are. Jesus had accused the scribes and the Pharisees of shutting the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces, according to Matthew chapter 23, verse 13. After God had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles, Acts 14, 27, some believing Pharisees tried to shut it. They had come to Antioch to teach Gentile believers that they had to follow the law of Moses, including circumcision, in order to be saved. Paul and Barnabas and others decided to have the apostles and elders settle the matter. No doubt each side felt very strongly about this position. Then Peter got up and addressed the assembly. He pointed out that if he was the one whom God had used to expand the church's outreach to include Gentiles, he reminded the gathering that the fundamental issue they were discussing was a matter that God had already decided some time ago. Barnabas and Paul reported to the whole assembly on their work among the Gentiles and how God had done signs and wonders through them. James, the half-brother of Jesus, had become a believer after Jesus' resurrection, according to Acts chapter 1, verse 14, and by this time was a highly respected leader in the Jerusalem church. In his remarks, he stated the consensus of those who had been convened. Even though the conference found that Gentile Christians had no obligations to the law of Moses as such, they did have an obligation to respect the moral sensitivities of their Jewish brothers and sisters. Some believe that these commands were meant primarily as an aid to fellowship between Jewish and Gentile Christians. Many of the Gentile believers at that point had worship at Jewish synagogues, but did not convert. They knew the moral differences between Jews and pagans and needed to live in such a way as not to offend the sensibilities of their Jewish brothers and sisters. Such common practice would help keep harmony in congregations that were made up of both Jewish and Gentile believers. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Join me soon for the next backstory and more. Stay safe and may God bless.